Hi, I'm here again with Scott Murray. When you think about the future of data visualization, what are you most excited about? Um, can you start with what I'm not excited about? Yeah. Uh, not excited about more tools, more data. That's like usually I think what people are excited about. But it's like every week some new tool gets announced, and every week you know some government releases some new data set, and like it's all very good, but it can just be so overwhelming. I think especially for people who are new. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, on one, on one hand, I'm excited about that. On the other hand, I'm like not very excited about that. Um, I guess what I am excited about is uh, having better resources for new people and, and having like all, so much excitement, like just, just getting these new people into the field. Because um, kind of like I was saying earlier, like everybody brings their own experience. And it's been, you know, I think, Visualization actually has this really long history, but it's sort of because it's kind of blowing up in this whole new way just recently, like with this convergence of, of open data and tools and open source and um, all, all the sort of things you need to practice it getting more and more accessible. Um, plus, of course, kind of the, the, the buzzwords of big data and like all this stuff we're excited about. So all these things have converged to make this like a really hot, exciting field right now. Um, which is great, but I think we forget that there's this whole history, um, you know, of this field, and that this this history is related to kind of representations of information before we started calling it data viz, and it goes back to to design and like how we evolved written language and you know hieroglyphics and all this all this stuff. So I think kind of in the the early days in this new resurgence of data visualization. Um, practice was limited to kind of some academics and then a handful of, of really specialized design firms. Um, but now it's, it's much, much bigger than that. So we have lots of people, we have people internal at companies who just do data viz for that company. We have um, more and more of these kind of boutique design firms that do um, kind of data design, data visualization. We have existing firms like design firms, graphic design who are getting into doing data. Uh, and so, and then of course we have like students and academics and um, just kind of people who don't fit into any of those categories who are practicing. So I think that's really, uh, really exciting, but it's also, I guess, a challenge for us because we have the existing books and resources and things are great, but not totally adequate because they, they address kind of different audiences in, in that vein. Uh, Edward Tufte's books are fantastic, but like he's a statistician and they're coming from this one point of view and I, I still recommend the books to everyone, but um, they don't address all of the latest kind of developments in interactive design. And what does this mean translating these ideas to a mobile experience? What does this mean translating this idea to a dashboard or a billboard or you know something in an advertisement? So there are all kinds of these new considerations, and I guess I'm, I'm excited about us sort of together gradually figuring out ways to address all those considerations. What are you most excited about when you think about the future of data visualization? I think what we're most excited about at Plotly, um, and we think a lot about, is what it would be like to be able to have massive worldwide collaboration um, in doing data analysis and graphing. And so a big part of what we've thought about for Plotly is making everything web ready. So if you already know, let's say, MATLAB, or you're really good at using Excel. Um, we don't think that um, it makes a lot of sense for you to also have to learn how to do web development. So we've tried to make it so it's really easy to keep using the tools that you're using, um, but then being able to get a web and collaboration layer for sharing your work with people from any language um, who are using any different type of technology, any different data type. And so it can really kind of be a translation layer because if you have really sophisticated, let's say, political scientists and engineers and data scientists who are all able to collaborate between their respective preferred development languages and tools and able to discuss things and make reproducible graphs and data and work on massive research projects, uh, we really hope that it would be able to further you know, science and collaboration in really any field of, you know, so we've thought about what if folks from NASA were streaming flight data and showing live satellite data? 
what if groups that were doing research on cancer were able to share their resu results with the world so anyone can reproduce their work and get involved with what they're doing so experts can collaborate naturally um, even if they didn't necessarily plan to do so from the beginning. Because if you make data and if you make graphs and you make tools available and free and easy to use, we think there's a lot of power behind that.